What is up everyone and welcome back to another video. So as you may know by now, peace control is one of the most important aspects of your Fortnite gameplay and that's why in today's video we'll be discussing how to master peace control in Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 3. I'll be first going over what peace control actually is and why it's so important and then I'll be going over all the best maps and general strategies you should be using to dramatically improve your peace control skills this season. If you find this video helpful then be sure to drop a like on it and consider subscribing as well if you want to see more content just like this in the future. And don't forget to turn on those post notifications if you want to make sure you see every video. I'm trying my best to get a bunch of awesome tips and tricks content out so it really helps out a lot. As well as that, if you want to help your boy out a bit extra then consider using code TECO in the Fortnite item shop as it's 100% free and it seriously helps me out a ton. With that said though and without further ado, let's get into today's video. So starting off this video, I want to begin with a little introduction to peace control. If you don't know exactly what peace control is yet, the simple definition that I like to give is this. Peace control is just using your builds and edits to control the fight. When you're using peace control, your ultimate goal is to use your builds and edits to force your opponent into a situation where they're stuck and you have a good peek on them to clean up the fight. Right here is a textbook example of what you can do with peace control and I actually hit this clip I think two days ago at the time I'm recording this video, hence the super low arena points since they had just reset. As you can see, my teammate and I are pushing this solo and I'm basically just diving in. In short, I end up building up to him. I notice he walls himself off on the left, so I know he's probably going to escape out to the right. So with that in mind, I jump up to the right, build a wall to cover myself and a floor to catch myself, and I simply edit through and box him up. Then while he's sitting there looking like a confused little flopper, I'm able to clean up the kill easily because the builds around him belong to me. This is what Fortnite looks like. What a freak, bro. Bro, you're act that was such a good piece. So as you saw from that clip, peace control is a really simple concept, but it definitely takes a lot of work to master it because you first have to learn the techniques in creative, then you have to actually practice to carry them over into the real game. So with that in mind, our ultimate goal with this video is to be able to control fights using our builds and edits and basically learn to use peace control and outpeak an opponent to get easy kills. So with that said, let's jump into our practice methods. Getting into our first peace control practice method, and this one is going to be Raiders peace control map V3. This map is pretty much the OG peace control map and the one that you're probably going to see pretty much everyone doing in order to improve it. And that's for very good reason as well. This map has an absolute ton of peace control scenarios ranging from beginner to advanced difficulty as you can see in the background gameplay right now. Each scenario has its own instructions and is basically meant to simulate a certain in-game situation where you're going to be using that exact peace control move. By doing this map consistently, you're basically going to be able to improve the mechanical and like the fundamental side of peace control. And this sets you up to later start focusing on the exact situations and applying these moves into the real game. Just keep in mind that with this map, we're not learning how to actually use the peace control move or when to use it, but rather just how to perform it. Depending on how you'd like to approach your practice, I typically recommend cycling through a few scenarios at a time. The option I personally recommend is to select three or four different scenarios each time you go into the map and do them each for a set amount of time. This could range anywhere from about three to five minutes if you're doing it as a warm up to 10 or so minutes each if you're really trying to put the work in. And basically each time you get on, you want to repeat that process for the same amount of scenarios, or I guess not necessarily the same amount of scenarios, scenarios, but just some more scenarios. So on day one, you could do scenarios one, two, and three. Then on day two, you do four, five, and six, and you rinse and repeat this process and start over once you're all done. I believe there are 25 scenarios in the map, so you should be able to get a lot of variety in that way. However you decide to do it, Raider's map is definitely a fundamental part of learning peace control, and I absolutely recommend you get started with it if you're trying to master peace control in Season 3. If you want to take note of the code, I'll go ahead and put it up on screen right now. Moving on to our second map for this video though, and we've got another really good one, which is Tito's Realistic Edit and Peace Control Map V4. This map has a couple of scenarios similar to Raider's, but I find it to be more beginner friendly and has a lot more variety in terms of practicing the mechanics of editing. This this map has four different sections including peace control easy, peace control advanced, realistic editing easy, and realistic editing advanced. And basically you can adjust which areas you use based on whether you're trying to practice purely the mechanics of editing, your peace control, and for whether you're a beginner or advanced player when it comes to these mechanics. Overall, while I recommend Raider's map for the majority of your technique practice, basically the practice you go through to learn exact techniques. I also strongly recommend Tito's map in order to really just get your mechanical skill up to par, that way you'll be able to keep up mechanically when you end up doing different peace control moves. So with that said, I'll put the code up right now to Tito's map. So moving on to our next section for today's video, and this next topic we're going to be discussing is how to apply peace control. As you would probably expect, it's pretty easy to do a peace control drill over and over again in creative and understand it on like a fundamental level, but it becomes a whole different ballgame when it actually comes to applying these techniques in real fights and real games. So what I'm going to do now is go through kind of the general process that I recommend you go through in order to bring your peace control techniques into your actual gameplay. And getting into the first step of this process, that's going to be 1v1 application. What I mean by 1v1 application is basically learning how to apply these techniques in a low stress environment against a real player. 
What you'll want to do here is select just a handful of techniques you've learned from the creative maps, preferably two or three different techniques, and then you're going to want to find someone to do a 1v1 against. This can be either a build fight 1v1 or a realistic 1v1, but the ultimate goal here is to have a low stress environment where you can learn to apply your techniques. Once you find that player to 1v1, simply hop into the map and start fighting. And during these fights, obviously you're going to want to play normally and try to win the fight, but you're also going to want to specifically focus on using the techniques that you learned. So although you'll be doing a regular 1v1 and trying to win however you can, you're also going to want to be looking for any opportunity to apply the techniques that you've recently learned in a, you know, proper and safe way. Through doing this, a couple of things are going to happen. First off, you're going to learn the technique from a mechanical perspective, you know, get better that way. You'll also learn how to adapt the technique to different situations. And lastly, you're going to learn when the technique can actually be used and when it's not as effective. Learning all of this really puts you in a good situation to begin applying the technique in real games, and it really helps a lot when it comes to truly understanding a technique rather than just knowing how to perform it. The next step of this process is going to be semi-realistic application. By semi-realistic application, I'm basically talking about something that puts you in an environment where you can apply the technique in an environment similar to a real match, but also where the technique isn't the top priority and you're able to just use it naturally rather than forcing it like you would in the first step. These can be all sorts of different things like zone wars, turtle wars, or even regular public matches if your ultimate goal is to use them in arena. Your goal here is literally just to play normally and only use the technique when it's actually a good idea to use it. Through the first step, you should have a general understanding of when it's good and bad to use the technique, so our goal here is basically to only use it in the good situations. Obviously, you can feel free to experiment a bit, but you know your goal is basically to do it properly. By doing this, you're able to get an even better grip on when and how to apply the technique, and you're sort of able to find its place in your gameplay. And the main bonus that I like with this step is that you can perform the technique against somewhat lesser skilled players, that way you can actually build the confidence to carry it over into real games. Confidence is a really big factor here, and a lot of players tend to learn peace control techniques, but not actually apply them simply because they're not confident enough. So practicing in low to medium pressure against average players is going to be a fantastic way to basically just build up the necessary confidence and experience. That way you can go into real situations and use the techniques you've learned. And once you've completed that semi-realistic application step, the final step of this process is simply to jump into the real thing and start using your techniques. Obviously, this isn't really a step that you have to consciously perform since it's literally just playing the game, but it essentially means that you're building experience in completely real situations. And now, over time with each technique you've learned, you'll slowly become more and more competent with it. The reason I recommend you go through this process rather than just doing the maps and saying whatever is mainly so you can build the actual confidence and experience you need to be able to apply the techniques in real games. Then once you've accomplished that, you're basically going to be ready to hop in, play normally, and the technique will simply flow in your gameplay. Something that I see a lot is someone goes straight from like Raider's map or Tito's map or something like that, and they just jump into the game and think they're going to do the peace control techniques properly. And that basically either gets them killed or they can't do it at all. So this process basically avoids that from happening and you're able to go in with confidence. And keep in mind that this process doesn't have to be completely linear and doesn't have to be exact. You can always make adjustments and you can always do it with multiple techniques as well. But overall, by transferring the techniques you learned from a no pressure environment like a peace control map to a minimal pressure environment like a 1v1, then to a low to medium pressure environment like a zone war or public match, and finally into the high pressure environment which is your regular gameplay, you should build all the necessary knowledge and confidence to use the techniques in real games. But with all that said guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video on how to master peace control in Fortnite Chapter 3 Season 3. Hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of peace control in general as well as how you can actually master it very quickly. If you use the maps we've outlined and follow Follow the process that we discussed to improve your peace control, you'll find yourself learning numerous new techniques and being able to apply them effectively in real games. If this video helped you out, then be sure to drop a like on it and consider subscribing as well if you want to see more content just like this in the future. As well as that, if you want to help your boy out a bit extra, then consider using code TECO in the Fortnite item shop as it's 100% free and it really helps me out a ton. Thank you so much to everyone who's using it. With that said though, thank you all for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.